Hello everybody. I'd just like to go ahead and say thank y'all very much for checking me out. My name is Sean Richardson. I'm a convicted felon. I ended up doing six years in the Texas prison system from the time I was 17 to the time I was 23. Now, if anybody here knows a little bit about Texas, it's very rough. I will say that, especially in prison. You can go ahead and you can be sent to a good prison and I, which I was sent to at PAC-2, but then you could later be transferred to a rather messed up prison, which I was also sent to called Clements in Missouri County. Now, I think there's like, I don't know how many prisons there are in, Houston, in Texas. There are a lot of prisons. Um, but one thing I can talk about is I've been on 12 different prisons in Texas. I was on uh, four different transfer facilities and then I was on uh, eight different prisons. Now, what I'd like to talk about is uh, my experience on them so everyone knows what to expect and what they can set to achieve in there. Um, when I first went to prison, I was 17, and I really didn't know that much about life. You know what I mean? I'm just now learning it. Uh, well, to back it up, I'm going to back it up before prison. Before I went to prison, I was 13 years old. I started selling weed. I started selling uh, uh, pills. I started selling acid. I started selling cocaine. I'm doing all this from the age of 13 to age of 17. I started selling acid when I was, uh, say, 15. I started selling pills when I was 14. I started selling weed when I was 13. I started selling cocaine when I was 16. And it just, you know, it was out of control. For me, it was out of control, you know, because uh, the thing was, is I was trying to go ahead and live, you know what I mean? I was, the reason why I wanted all this money was because my father didn't provide me any means of being able to make any money, you know what I'm saying? He didn't provide me any um, allowance. And so I felt the need to go ahead and make money on my own, so that was how I did it. My father worked nights for Metro, and uh, it was what it was. I go to prison when I'm seven years old for an aggravated robbery and burglary of habitation. An aggravated robbery means we robbed someone with a gun. It was our second time to go ahead and rob this guy. Um, the burglary of habitation, I ended up picking up that charge while I'm in jail because I went over and I was, I knew I was going to prison already for the aggravated robbery. So I was just like, might as well give me the burglary of habitation too. And I ran into a buddy. He got busted with some stuff that I sold him. And uh, when that happened, you know, he went over and he ended up going down for it. So in order for me to go ahead and take back, I told the, uh, the district attorney I robbed the house. And so I pled guilty to that one as well. Um, to, going back to prison, it was very crazy, to be honest with you. Going back to prison, it was very crazy to say the least. Um, I was on Clemens unit. That is by far the worst penitentiary in Texas. Um, there's there's another couple uh, prisons that are worse, like Terrell unit, Ferguson unit, Beto, uh, but Clemens unit is a very bad unit. Uh, it has a youthful offender program on there. If you're age 17, 21, you can be housed on that on that unit. Uh, I was housed there because I, when I went to prison, I was 17 years old. And in Texas, you are a legal adult at the age of 17. So this is what happens to me. I'm in there and I see that when I first get on the unit, they call it burning hell. They don't call it Clemens unit. They call it burning hell. And uh, it was crazy to say the least. My first day there, I go to the classification committee and I'm in front of the ma major Germany. I'm in front of the, the, uh, the uh, classification team, which was a, uh, a lady that worked in classification. And um, I'm talking to them and I'm telling them, I work and all that good stuff, and I'm getting my housing assignment, and I'm getting my job assignment. 
Major Germany goes ahead and tells me, he says, you ever been here before? I said, no. He said, okay, well, I'm going to tell you something real quick. He says, are you going to fight? You going to fuck? Or are you going to buzz a 60? And I'm going, wow. I'm like, okay. And uh, I, I, I said, well, I don't know what all that means. He says, okay, you're either going to fight, you're either going to get fucked by inmates, or you're going to bust a $60 store for someone. Which one are you going to do? I said, well, I'm, I guess I'm going to fight. He says, all right, I'm going to put you on the third row. Do not fight on the third row. Take every fight down to the day room. Do not fight in your cell. Do not do none of that. Fight in the day room. He said the reason why you can you could get hurt, you could get killed, because you could get thrown off the, the third row and end up dying. I'm like, yes, sir. So that was what happened. So anyway, I, I leave the, the classification committee. I'm in a room and in it are walking by all the inmates that are going to chow hall. Now, when this is taking place, I'm sitting here looking at all the inmates passing by, and I see everyone looking in at us, and I'm, I'm counting the number of black eyes and the number of double black eyes that I saw. I must have saw like seven to ten uh, black eyes, and then I saw four guys with double black eyes. I knew when I saw that, I knew I was going to be fighting. You know what I'm saying? I knew that whenever the, the major Germany told me, are you going to fight? Are you going to fuck? Are you going to bust a $60 store for someone? I knew that I was fighting. You know, so I already know what's going on when I got there. And um, it was crazy to say the least. So I get to my housing assignment on the third row. I'm putting everything up in my cell. And uh, this black guy walks by. He looks me up and down. He says, are you going to fight for them shoes? I said, yes, I am. He said, come down to the day room. I said, okay. So they went over and they let, let us out of our cells. I'm going down to the day room. And I, I go down there, there and I meet a guy named Shorty. He's a black dude. And uh, Shorty went on to say, he said, okay, this is how it goes. You're either going to ride with these white dudes who are sitting on the floor or you're gonna ride with that white dude over there sitting on the bench. He says, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. It's gonna be easier you ride with these white dudes sitting on the floor. I said, okay. So I went over and I talked to the white dude sitting on the floor. I said, hey, what's up, my name's Sean. They're like, okay. And uh, one of the guys said, okay, we, we go ahead and we uh, pay $60 sore every two weeks to a guy, and, you know, he, he, I'm like, so you're riding? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. I don't, I'm not riding. And uh, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll catch y'all later. So I let the white dude sit on the floor. There was about eight to ten of them. And then I went to the white dude who was sitting on the bench. He said, yeah, those dudes are riding. He's like, I don't ride. There's another white guy. He doesn't ride either. And um, he says, if you're going to be down for years, you're going to be down for years. You're going to get into a, a bunch of fights. Nobody's going to jump in. If anybody does jump in, then I'm jumping in, you know? And uh, it was, uh, you know, going through that experience, it was crazy, to say the least. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you, you know you're in a bad spot. You know you're in a bad place. But then when you, when you get to that bad, I mean, it's just crazy. So anyway... I'm like, okay, I'm cool. So then I, I went back to Shorty. I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm riding with homeboy over there. And he's like, all right. He's like, are you ready? And I said, yeah. He says, you're fighting that dude right there. So this dude gets up. We're fighting. We're fighting. We're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, hitting each other as hard as we can. You name it. I never fought so hard in my life. And then all of a sudden, the, the fight you know, went on for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And then it ended after, you know, whatever, 50 seconds. And I'm, and I'm, thinking, that, I'm thinking I'm all done, you know? I'm like, okay, cool. 
you know, he tore me up, he got me a black eye, gave me lumps on my forehead, all that stuff. So I, I, I said, Shorty, am I, am I cool? And then he says, you gotta fight that dude over there. Mexican dude got up. We're going toe to toe. And this Mexican is like, he's a little bit shorter than me, but he is like, he's stocky. And he is like, he is hitting me, banging me, and I'm, and I'm like, he, he caught me two times in the head, and uh, my head went back when I, when I, from his punch, and I hit a metal uh, conduit behind me. And when I did it, laid open my head in the back. Might go see the scar. And um, so I'm bleeding all over the place. I'm still fighting as hard as I can. You know, because whenever, whenever I got into fights in prison, I wasn't fighting for, you know, I was fighting to save my booty. You know what I'm saying? Nobody knows how hard you will fight when you're fighting for your own booty. You know what I'm saying? I can tell you that right now. You don't know what you're capable of until you're fighting for your own booty. And every fight I got into in prison, it was like that. That's how hard I was fighting. And uh, so I, 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 get, I get done with the fight, we're fighting for like 40, 50 seconds, you know, a minute, and uh, then it's all over with. And, you know, I'm holding my head and everything. And I went back and I sat down at the day room for a sec, and I'm, you know, just collecting my th thoughts. I'm trying to, like, realize like, I'm cool, I'm cool, you know. I got two black eyes, my mouth's all busted up, lips all busted up, bleeding in the back of the head. And uh, Shorty came up to me and said, are, are you going? Are you going to pay, or, or you know, you going to ride, or what? I'm saying no, I'm not riding. He said, okay, let's well, do over there. Wants to fight you. I get into the third fight. We're going at it. Boom, 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 boom. This dude beats me up. You know what I'm saying? But I don't quit fighting. You know, there's another black dude, and uh, like, you know, it was crazy. To, sell, to say the least. And uh, so I, I went through that situation. And I, and I went back to the, to the day room and I, I'm sitting down, I'm holding my head and everything. And uh, Shorty came up and he says, are you, are you gonna ride or? I said, no, I'm fighting. And he said, okay. And then all of a sudden, boom, the, the officer came in and uh, he went over and said, all right, I need y'all to rack it up. He racked us all up. And uh, I'm, I'm passing by him, and I'm holding my head and everything. He says, you, you stop right there. And I said, okay. So I stopped right there. He said, what happened? And I, I said, I don't, I don't know what happened. I must have hit something. And he said, you need to go to the infirmary. So I went to the infirmary. And um, I, went to, I went to cell restriction for, for about, I think, 12 to 13 days. I went to the infirmary at first, got my head stitched up. After that, I went over and uh, in there, I'm, I'm healing up. I'm, uh, you know, doing what I got to do. And uh, I'm doing my cell restriction. I went and saw classification again. The major's going all crazy on me. Um, and the thing was, is like, I'm, I'm like, you know, I didn't think it was going to be that bad, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't know. It was just it was a crazy experience. I told them all I want to do is do my time and go home. And that's it. I'm not telling on nobody. I'm not doing any, anything wrong. This is how it's going down. So the the warden, he heard me and uh, he's like, "Okay." So he went over and he said, "Well, send him back out to his house." So they sent me back out to my house and it was what it was. My first day on Clemens unit, I got into three fights back to back to back. You know, I never once got into a fight with a white dude. I had the opportunity to get into a fight with a white dude because I made a mistake and said something I shouldn't have said. And what I did was, is oh, there was another white guy and he got some shoes given to him from another white dude. And the thing is, is I know based on, on what I've gone through, anybody that ever gives you something wants something. 
And um, so what happens is, is I told the dude, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take nothing from anybody. And that's because, you know, I went over and I've seen what goes on in prison. And uh, so he went and told the other white dude that I told him that he was going to, you know, that something was going to go down. And uh, the other white guy talked to me. And um, he was an older guy. He was probably like 40 or something. And he said, I'm not going to fight you. And the reason why is because there are just not enough ones. There was only uh, six people in, in the 50-man dorm. Six of them were white. The rest of them were black and Mexican. And that was how it was in, in, every, in every dorm. There was like, uh, like to give you an, an honest example, when I was in county jail, there's 24 man dorms. Well, about, I'd say about 14 of them are black, seven to nine of them are, are Mexican, and then I'd be the only white guy. When I went to prison, the numbers were a little bit better. Uh, there'd be 50 man, there, well, when I was in a dormitory, there was 50 man dorms. And when that happened, there would be about six to eight white dudes, uh, 20 to 30 Mexicans, 20 to 30 uh, black guys. And it, you know, it, it was, the numbers were like that. Um, so it was, you know, as you can see, it was kind of crazy, you know. Um, when I was on the cell blocks, there was only, there was a four row tier. I was on the youthful offender program. There was about 50 men on each tier. So there was about 200 inmates on each tier. Um, there was three of us that weren't riding. There was another eight to 10 guys that weren't riding. You know, that was giving up the booty, that was paying protection, that was going through all this stuff. Um, I'm just being honest about this, you know. That's how it was in Texas. It ain't no joke, you know, especially on a Clemens unit. The average time frame that people had was 25 to 50 years on Clemens. There was some people that had, like me, I only had six years I was there. Um, there was some other guys that had 99 ag, life sentences. That's the way it was. It was a very intense place to be. I didn't do all my time there. What happened was is I went over and I, um, I ended up getting moved out the unit for uh, college because I ended up going to college in prison. I uh, got moved to Central Unit, which was a very good unit. Um, got moved to Central. I was very thankful to be off Clemens. Um, it was very crazy what took place at that time. Um, I went to college. I uh, almost got an associate's degree. And uh, what happened was is I, I did get a horticulture degree. And uh, I get out of a prison and I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So I get me a job working as a masonry laborer for Lucia Constructors out of Houston, Texas. And we're building a jail in downtown Houston. All this is going on. I'm going to Houston Community College. I ended up transferring to every college in the state of Texas because I didn't know who would take me because I had to put in an application to go to different schools. I put in one to, to Texas A&M. I put in one to Texas State. I put in one to uh, Texas Tech. I put in one to uh, University of Texas. Everything comes back. I end up getting. Uh, I end up getting a. All of them accept me into their colleges because I had like a three point eight. GPA, and um, I ended up choosing Texas A&M because I figured out what I was going to be when I grew up. I figured out that I was going to be a construction manager. Now, before this even happened, before 
I, I figured out what I was going to be, I did something very important. And I, and I went to Occupation Isle of Handbook. A lady who I worked with told me I need to look at Occupation Isle of Handbook because it'll teach me what I want to be when I grow up. And this is a very, very, very important website. Type, go to Google, type in Occupational Outlook Handbook. What you're going to find is it is going to lead you to a, to a website it, through the labor of Bureau of Statistics. And from there, you can check it out. And it's going to tell you about every occupation you could ever think of. What you can think of being. You know, it's going to talk about lawyers, dentists, podiatrists, construction managers, gymnasts, ballet people, sales, every, every type of job you can ever think of becoming, it's going to tell you about it. And uh, so I ended up checking this out. I ended up going to the, uh, the Army, the Navy, Marines, the Air Force, trying to get in. All of them denied me because I had been to prison. Um, it was kind of crazy to say the least because I felt like, you know, when, when they denied me, I felt like my life was over, like I was no more good because I wasn't going to, you know, get a job. You know, I wasn't going to be able to, to do anything. So anyway, what, ha what happens is I, I, I end up uh, finding out I'm going to be a construction manager. And uh, I'm going to go to the best school I can go to. And uh, whenever I transferred into Texas A&M, because uh, they have the best construction management program, graduated in 2005, December 2005, I graduated. I ended up working for Burger Electric as an estimator. Worked for them for nine months. I ended up working for California Sheet Metal as a project engineer. I ended up working for, uh, oh no, excuse me, I ended up working for Helix Electric as a project engineer. I ended up working for California Sheet Metal as a project manager. That's three years after I've been out of, the, out of school. From there, my life just went, just hit the, you know, I'm making moves and I'm, I'm doing so good in life. And uh, I ended up starting three businesses. I ended up starting an electrical business, an irrigation business, a sales and marketing business. I ended up having three sons by two different women. Uh, one of them was my girlfriend. Got her pregnant. Things don't work out between me and her. I ended up uh, marrying another girl. Uh, things don't work out between me and her. Um, Ended up getting a divorce 11 months later. What happened was I went through a terrible car accident. And uh, always wear your seatbelt. Don't ever drink and drive. Please. Um, I wrote a, uh, I, I wrote a, well, I didn't write, but I went over and I did a, a short film on my experiences with uh, drinking and driving and always wear your seatbelt. And you can find that on it. You can find that on Sean Richardson. Always wear your seatbelt in the YouTube. There you will learn why you should always wear your seatbelt. It's a powerful, it's a powerful message to say the least. As a result of all that happening in uh, December 2013, I went through a terrible car accident in which I was flung from my car. I broke my clavicle in half, broke nine ribs in half, opened up from the sump from bottom of my butt, bottom of my chest. Had my lungs pumped two times because I caught pneumonia. Surgery done on this side. I'm lucky it's still in there. Uh, lost my ear in the streets. Um, fractured my skull. Broke my knee. 
Three ligaments from my dad will put my knee. Crazy. I was retarded, two month long coma. Um, it's something you never want to go through in life, I can tell you that. You don't ever want to go through a coma. I can tell you that. You do not want to go through a coma. You don't think correctly when you go through a coma. Um, my brain was very much slowed down. I learned, I mean, I'm, I'm still recovering from the coma right now. It's been five years. It's uh, May of 1st, uh, 2019. It's crazy, you know, all that life will throw at you. On, Ju on June 3rd, 2016, I'm locked up for dissuading a witness. I'm charged for my third strike. And if anybody has ever dealt with that in San Diego, third strike means you start out at 25 to life. Um, so I was starting out at 25 to life on this case. I fired my attorneys. I fired my first attorney the first time I ever met him because he wasn't trying to do nothing. But, you know, he, he said he'd give me a deal. You know, I was like, okay, we'll go see what you can do. He comes back like 15 years. I'm like, no, you're done. Like, you're fired. My second attorney is some lady. She acted like she was going to try to help me. I find out after I went over and I meant the reason why I'm in there. Okay. Yeah, you're now I'm in there from June 3rd, 2016 till February 24th, 2017. I'm in there eight months. I'm in the San Diego jail system. The best jail in the world, to be honest with you. I love that place. Um I like a like compared to Houston, like Man, being locked up in Houston, Texas, and being locked up in San Diego, it's like going to the, you know, it's like, it's like the difference between the Hyatt. Living on the streets is like living in, in, in Houston, Houston jail. Living in the Hyatt is like compared to the, to the jail in San Diego. I mean, it's, it's literally that good. But anyway, um, the reason why I'm in there for such a long time is because first they tried to go ahead and say that I was crazy. So I had to fight that. Everyone's telling me, dude, play it off like you're crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not crazy though. I'm not gonna go ahead and I'm not even gonna think that I'm crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't wanna go to a place and try to act like I'm sane. I am a sane person. So I beat that part of the case in November of 2016 and then my uh, I was able to go through uh, pro per because the reason why my, my attorney she didn't even try to give me my bond reduced I had like a like I got the bond back in uh, November of 2016 because they took it away from me after the first week I was in and uh, so anyway they went over and they tried to give me for every kind of money they give me for and the, the judge is asking my attorney, do you want the bond? And she's like, no, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk to the other, other district, the other uh, judge about the bond. I'm like, dude, bond, get the bond. I want a bond. She's like, no, we're not gonna do it. So I ended up not, I ended up not getting a bond. I'm like, you're fired. You know what I'm saying? In my head, I'm like, you are fired. You're done. Beating the case. Five day trial, two day jury deliberations. I come out not guilty. The thing was, is they're going after me on a case that they knew that I didn't do, but they still try to go ahead and, and pin it on me. It's crazy what you'll go through here in San Diego. I'll say that. Jail in 2017. I've attended school at Seno City College since August of 2017. I got my HVAC degree in December of 2018. I went over and uh, am now working on a lectural degree and an RTBF degree. In RTBF, 
I like to learn. And that's what I'm doing here at San Jose City College. I'm still recovering from the coma. My brain is starting to click into gear. I'm starting to see things that I couldn't see before. And, you know, I like it. I like what I'm seeing. When I made a, a video, it's called uh, Sean Richardson, Always Wear Your Seatbelt. I went over and I made a, a video. It's called uh, Sean Richardson, Always Wear Your Seatbelt. I'd like for everybody to go ahead and take a minute and to go check it out because it's a good video. And uh, I show pictures and all that. You can see what kind of car I wrecked. You can see my injuries and all that stuff. I got pictures online. Over and I made a, a video. It's called uh, Sean Richardson, Always Wear Your Seatbelt. I'd like for everybody to go ahead and take a minute and to go check it out because it's a good video. And uh, I show pictures and all that. You can see what kind of car I wrecked. You can see my injuries and all that stuff. I got pictures online. Um, I wrote a book, 92,000 words. It's called Forward. And if you email me at seanrichardson05 at yahoo.com, and write forward, I will send you a copy of my book and the pictures. One of the things I love to do is I love to learn. Um, I like telling people different stuff, I like educating people. Uh, forward works. I got 15 minute workouts and 10 minute workouts. And so if you write forward works, 10 minute workouts, or 15 minute workouts, you'll see a list of my workouts. And I can, you know, I have them all list, listed out. I also have another uh, channel, which is called Ford Marketing. And basically, all you write is Ford Marketing, number one, and you get to see a video. Number two, you get to see a video. Number three, you get to see a video. Number four, number five, and number six. And I think all I have is six videos at the current time. But my videos are all about how to go from nothing to something. You know, I, I love telling people how I went over and started my companies up, how I started my businesses up, how I went over and hired people. It's what I do. I don't mind telling people these stories because I think that it'll help them. I just want everyone here to, to learn and, you know, like, I like learning, so I like to teach other people what I've learned. I don't like to keep it all to myself. You know, it does me no good to sit here and be quiet. Anyway, though, I'd just like to say thank y'all very much for watching me to the end. Um, I, and I'd just like to say thank you very much. I just want y'all to know to go ahead and to live forward. Keep going forward in life. You know what I'm saying? Don't go look back. Don't look to the side. Don't look to the left. Keep going forward. That's the way you want to move. You know? Thank y'all. Y'all have a nice day. Take care. Bye.